What is going on my friends and family and welcome back to another video here on Team Acne. Today I have some very important information to get to you guys and I'm surprised that nobody has covered this yet on YouTube. Now this question I'm sure has popped into your head before. It's popped in my head a billion times and it's does living in a popular city, having air pollution, having smog around you affect your skin quality and your acne? And recently there has been some scientific studies and actually do show a huge correlation to an increase in acne with with living in a popular city. Now, we're gonna break down that study, go through it really quickly, and then at the end of this, we're gonna talk about what you can do about it, so make sure that you do stick around for the end of the video. But right now, we are just going to jump right into this study because this study is very interesting and uncovers some very enlightening information. Okay, so let's just jump right into it. The study's name is Pollution and Acne, Is There a Link? And this was performed by eight scientists who have a specialty in dermatology and skin. Now, the study is really, really long, so I did my best to break it down into about six or seven parts that I'll read to you that really kind of summarize the most important things that you really should know about. Okay, so right in the introductory paragraph, they say this. In recent years, an increasing number of studies indicate a link between skin problems and exposure to airborne pollutants such as particulate matter, PM, volatile organic compounds, ozone, nitrogen dioxide, and sulfur dioxide. As a recent example, NO2 exposure has been linked to pigment spot formation on cheeks in both Caucasian and Asian women. So right off the bat, they're going in and saying that there definitely is an indication between pollution and acne because of the things that are in pollution and smog and all of the particulate matter that is floating around in the air in densely populated areas. Also, they said that they see an increase in pigment spot formation, so discoloration because of living in these very densely populated areas. Going a little bit farther into the study, they explain a little bit why there actually is an increase in acne, and they say this, several comprehensive review papers highlight recent molecular and cellular research that suggests with acne, the quality of sebum excreted on the skin surface changes. This alters the lipid composition and redox ratio on the skin surface. So that was kind of like a little bit of a complex, you know, uh, quotation there, but mostly what you need to get out of that is that sebum is the oil secreted on your face from your sebaceous glands that's what causes acne right and what they're saying is that it changes being in a popular area that has pollution changes the quality the type of sebum that is being excreted on your face now all of that is very important because this next part that I found in the study that says this one of the lipids produced by human sebaceous glands on the face and torso is squalene this unsaturated fatty acid represents 10 to 15 percent of sebum and is readily oxidized by ozone long UV rays and tobacco smoke. Byproducts produced from squalene peroxidation are known to be comedogenic and also demonstrate pro-inflammatory properties. Okay, now this is all very important because like I'm saying, everyone produces sebum on their face, but what they're saying is that by being in popular areas that have pollution, it can cause peroxidation of that squalene. So basically it just means that it can turn that squalene, that little part of your sebum, to comedogenic properties, which means basically that it can and does clog your pores. It also causes a pro-inflammatory response, which means that you're gonna have more inflammation, which is, you know, those big pimples, those redness and stuff. So just by default, living somewhere that has more smog and pollution does increase acne. Okay, so all this is already sounding terrible, right? That does not sound good. There's one more part that I do wanna bring up uh, in terms of what it does to your skin and why it is not good for your skin, not good for your acne, and why it does cause acne. This stress has been suggested to eventually overwhelm the skin's natural defenses, depleting its antioxidant capacity such as vitamin C and E, contributing to a background inflammatory environment and disrupting the skin barrier function. So it's also depleting your antioxidants that are on your skin and in your body, vitamin C and E, which are very important for fighting against acne. Now, really quickly, I do wanna mention that while this is just one study, they did study many different studies. And that's what I think is really important here because whenever you hear something, you should always check and see if there are multiple studies that back up that result. So what they say here are that retrospective data was collected over a two year period and included 60,000, about 60,000 patients with acne. The authors found that increased ambient air concentrations of some of the most important traffic and industry related pollutants were associated with an increased number of outpatient visits for acne vulgaris. So during the times that pollution was the highest, they saw an increase in people coming into the dermatology centers and having issues with acne. That is a lot of people. Now, that is just one of the studies that they reference in this paper. There's also quite a few other studies that were performed by different companies and they all lead to the same thing, 
that living in populated areas that have high pollution do cause acne. Now that we got through the science, got through why and what and how they discovered this, what do we do about this? Because like I said earlier, a lot of us aren't just going to move to the countryside. A lot of us can't move out into the middle of the mountains, grow a beard and wear flannel jackets and, and you know, cut trees down and stuff. We have to live in the cities, right? Well, the eight scientists who wrote this paper have some suggestions. And then I also have a website that I found that references this paper and then gives their kind of spin on what they think you should do as well. In light of the data available, the board supports the goal of dermocosmetic protection to reinforce skin barrier function. This prevents further provoking the inflammatory cycle and in turn associated problems such as aggravated disease severity and post-inflammatory pigmentation. So the first thing that they suggest that we should do is a skincare product dedicated to acne patients may provide a protective barrier from pollution, restore microbiome equilibrium to prevent overabundant bacteria colonization and control disease severity and post-inflammatory pigmentation, which is a concern in this population. So they don't quite yet suggest and provide a product exactly that you should use, but it would be a, probably a safe bet to say that a moisturizer would help protect you and create a barrier between the pollutants and your actual skin itself. Okay. And then the second one that they say here, which is I think important for people who are on different acne medications like Accutane, they say some acne medications such as isotretinoin, topical retinoids, and BPO dry the skin. Patients using these products should apply appropriate moisturizers as complementary therapy to control skin dryness and restore skin barrier function. So right off the bat, they're saying that dryness is not a good thing, especially in this environment where you're having pollutants hit your face. And it's also kind of backing up what I just said, having a moisturizer does restore proper skin barrier function. Okay, and then this third one, they do suggest something actually specifically here, and they say, appropriate cleansers that do not further disturb the natural barrier function are suggested to eliminate pollution on the skin surface. Avoid using facial or body scrubs, cleanse the skin well, and use mild medical cleansers. So right there, I thought that was very interesting too, because not only is the pollutants actually causing these changes to your face, but they're actually like identifying them as basically pieces that are sticking to your face too. So like kind of like dirt, except obviously different than dirt, but you know what I'm saying? Like it can actually collect on your face. And so they're saying that you should actually clean it off and make sure that you're getting this pollutants off every single day. From reading through that whole study, reading through those suggestions at the end there, what I'm getting from this is that one, we need to be making sure that we use a cleanser to get that bad pollutants off of our face. And two, we need to have something to create a barrier on our face, i.e. probably a moisturizer to not only keep away dryness, but create that barrier. And three, we need to have something that's restoring our antioxidants that are being depleted from living somewhere that has high pot pollution. So vitamin E and vitamin C need to be present. Well, luckily for me, I've actually already been doing all of these things without knowing this study and that I really should be doing these things because I live somewhere that is densely populated. So Banish Acne Scars has this lineup that has a gentle mint cleanser, which is a great way to get that pollutants off your face every single day. And then they also have three different vitamin C products. They have a, a Banish Oil, which is a vitamin C oil. They have a vitamin C cream, which is a moisturizer. And they have a vitamin C spray, which is just something you can quickly throw on your face anytime. Now I use all four of those products as well as the other products that deal with acne scars because I do have scarring. And my main reason of using the vitamin C originally was to help with redness because my face does get red, my scars do get red but I didn't know how important it was due to this study and these studies. I would definitely suggest going and getting products that have vitamin C and E as a moisturizer mixed in and then a gentle cleanser. Now the vitamin C cream from Banish is a vitamin C cream, but it also has tociferol, which is a vitamin E, and that makes it so that you can have a moisturizer as well as get that vitamin C and E back on your face that has been depleted from the pollution. So there's the products that you should be using if you are in a populated city that has air pollution to combat your acne. I also think there's a lot of other things that cause acne when you are in a city, like raised stress levels, probably decreased sleep, all sorts of different things like eating a lot of fast food or eating a lot of prepared food. There's loads of other factors, but at least right now, I wanted to talk about this specific study, bring this to your awareness because I haven't seen anybody talk about this before. And it's relevant to most of us because most of us do live in cities. And now you know what you can do to take care of it and to fight back this kind of like terrible thing that we just found out in this study. Anyways, that brings us to the end of this video. Anytime I find research like this, I want to bring it to your attention so that you know what's going on, what's coming at you when it comes to acne and what you can do to, you know, combat back and fight back against it. If 
if there's any you know topic or idea that you want me to cover let me know anywhere in the comments on any of my videos I check them all and if you enjoyed this video make sure you give it a big old thumbs up let me know what you thought in the comments below and subscribe if you are not subscribed already remember you are not alone you are beautiful and you're a part of team acting I'll see you guys in the next video